What's up guys? We're trying a new concept here on the channel suggested by my buddy Tom Ryan. This is the monthly warp whistle. We're going back in time and we're going to check out four past episodes. They're going to be short clips in case you miss something and you can always go back and check out the full episode if that interests you. So here are four episodes that were in the past that you guys may have missed. Enjoy. Welcome to the monthly warp whistle. Okay. All right, so I'll start off with the one that I remember was first, which was Video Kid. Ah, uh, yes. Video Kid is like a uh, paperboy meets um, 80s and 90s like n like pop uh, culture icons. So you're like this Marty McFly looking dude, and your your job is to deliver VHS tapes. And you're on a skateboard instead of a bicycle, but it's very, it looks exactly like Paperboy. And the coolest part is along your journey, you run into like uh, Lucy from from Snoopy or Charlie Brown. You run into the Fraggles. You run into Scrooge McDuck. You run into Transformers, uh, Ghostbusters, uh, Scooby Doo. There's Inspector Gadget there. Um, I think Mad Max car was there. Superman, Superman. There's a Smurf. There's E.T. I mean, it's so, just overload of like, all right, you know, everything from the 80s. Well, it's uh, in this game. Exactly. The, I mean, Homer Simpson's in it. Marge is in it. Uh, it's just it's really crazy. And I just beat it this year. After okay. Playing it like a thousand times. Um, but it's really, really fun. If you love Paperboy, uh, you can unlock different um different outfits like there's a the joker there's cookie monster arnold schwarzenegger um you even see um pamela anderson run down the um the sidewalk in a minute yeah and again you're throwing vhs tapes instead of newspapers right but and you're you almost, still what's that you're still trying to deliver them into the mailboxes into which the is mailbox the yes and it almost has a minecraft pixel art feel to it where they're the characters are like everything is real blocky yes so it has that aesthetic where okay you know that's it's pixely but it's not like this wouldn't be able to be on like a nintendo or something like that but it's giving that an aesthetic so that's why it's like it's a new retro game yeah it's on the it's on the eShop on the switch i don't know what other consoles it's on but it's highly addictive and a lot of fun Gato Roboto, which I just finished on the Switch, and it kind of looks like a Game Boy game. Yeah, but, it looks really cool. Like the little cat looks like it's a black and white Game Boy game. Right. And again, it, it, you're in space, but you're playing as a, a cat who gets into a mech suit. So, so you're kind of like, okay, you're in your power suit like Samus or whatever. It's like Samus left her suit and the cat's like, sweet, I'm jumping in. Right, so your your uh, owner is stuck in his spaceship and crashes, so he sends you out to go explore. And this is how it looks here. It's in, you know, the kind of like black and white. And you go through the game and you find different tapes, like cassette tapes, which allow you to change the color palette Ooh. of how you view it. So they have one called Virtual Tape, so it's red, so it looks like a virtual boy. Oh, sick. And they have uh, they have some weird ones where it's like piss tape and it's like yellow. Oh, weird. I don't know if I <laughs> or it like might that. be it might be urine. Maybe they, they don't say piss. <laughs> <laughs> Look um, who's potting it up now, Russ. There's like a, this time. A, a nicotine one. There's like so many weird variations, but there's 14 tapes all together. So if you collect them all, you get two special enhancements in the game. But you can jump in the sh suit and play. Or you could hop out and be the cat, and the cat can climb walls, so it lets you get a little bit higher in some of the levels. And again, I, I beat this in a couple of days. I probably put, I don't know, maybe four hours into it. Oh, that is my kind of game, Russ. So you could certainly beat it in one sitting. And again, that's that's Metroid right there. Save the save thing. Yeah, it's really. Even looks, even looks like the intro of Super Metroid, right? With the tube, super fun. Gato Roboto makes me think of the Mr. Roboto. Yeah, no more gato, Mr. Roboto. Exactly. 
fun fun story and everything definitely check it out and i said i love these games that kind of look like a game boy game and you're you're playing it on the switch you're like hey yeah give the game boy some love yeah me too and it's barely very obviously aliens right that's right you're you're in, you're in the last boss here you just killed the heart you can see like the face huggers basically the and face you're shooting, huggers. you're shooting this heart fairly easy boss i will say for for the ending once you know kind of what to do all right. you got to do is kind of do some management of the creatures face huggers. From, face huggers from like coming from the top and the bottom but if you got the 30 live code i mean you could just run straight up there put your gun up and just rapid fire as fast as you can honestly if you have spread it's going to be pretty easy too yes that would be helpful as well or you know playing two player you could have one person take care of the face huggers while you're shooting the heart but definitely a fun game to play co-op or alone. And first time through, you know, if you didn't know the Contra code, you only had three lives. So you had to get really good at this game. That's right. In order to beat it. Because with three lives, it's like, oh, it's a lot of levels. Well, so here's, of- the, here's the thing, Russ. If you just use the three lives, eventually you can gain more lives in the game. Right. With getting points. You That's get right. your extra yep. live and all that. So. But once you blow up that heart there, you hear that classic end music of completing the level. And then it fades out and it shows the island you were on and you escape in a helicopter while the island explodes. That's in right. In the nick of time. Super classic, like, 80s action movie ending. And we it got, gives you, like, a little rundown of, like, what you just did, which is kind of cool. Right. Congratulations. You've destroyed the vile Red Falcon and saved the universe. Consider yourself a hero. I mean, that's pretty cool. And it's got some killer music, too. That's one thing with a lot of these games. The tracks. The ending track has to slap. That's right. Because <laughs> they, they need you to stick around to mispronounce all these names. Right. Like, S. <laughs> Umizakai. All right, you ready for my next one, Russ? Yes. This one's going to come to no shock to anybody. If you if you know anything about me, you know one of my favorite games is Batman. On my list as well. Love how even though Batman doesn't kill people, he definitely kills somebody on this. <laughs> he punches Joker in the face. You see Joker fall down the the the, the tower, hit the ground. His little laugh box goes off. <laughs> I mean, it follows through through what the movie did, the Batman Which movie. Which I think makes it so rad. And that music. Hmm. You can even see the Joker fall. Right. I mean, that's a pretty dramatic scene there. You get lots of cut scenes and with then this gets, one here. It gets like closer and closer to his dead body. Right. right? You can see the Joker laying there. And then you kind of get a closer of him on the ground. Again, if you've seen the Tim Burton movie, now you see his dead face, and you're like, "Oh, okay." And the and the sprites are great in this. For like it, it even a... shows his weird, like upper lip, how it was like indented almost, you know? Right. Love Batman. Love the ending. Love the game. Love all of it. Yeah, certainly good. That music. Let it kick in. So, Russ, the first time I heard this music, <laughs> after not hearing it for like twenty something years, yeah, I, I was just like flooded back with like emotion. Like my, I, I got chill bumps in my arms now, just thinking about like how, like, if it wasn't for Batman, I would not even be sitting here with you today, because it was in my brain that I thought I've never beat Batman. I want to get a Nintendo and beat it, and that's the whole reason I'm here, Batman. Batman on the NES. There you go. Yeah, it's certainly one I rented a lot growing up. I never got to beat it back in the day, so I could only dream of what the ending could be. Right. Um, but I'm happy to see that, you know, they did follow the story where it's interesting where a lot of the levels aren't exactly right to what the Tim Burton movie was. Right. But there were pieces and the ending still fit to what they were telling for the story there. Yeah. And again, we were treated to plenty of scenes um, 
depicting that ending, not just they could have just been, you know, one scene you see Batman and punching the Joker and it could have been text. Yeah. Saying, and, the, and the Joker fell off the thing and got them like, saved. Yeah. Like, I really feel like that was like. Like, a, like a really like that ending, you feel like you got a reward getting to watch all that after beating it. You know, like right. it was nice and long and drawn out and. You know, you're usually jacked up after that last Joker fight because it's so dang hard. And then, like, you're like, oh, take a breather and watch this cool ending. Absolutely. Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure there is an episode of James and Mike Monday, and Mike's like, I, I, I think they beat this game. I, they beat something. It might have been Castlevania, but I think it was this one. And Mike's like, appreciate the ending. Appreciate the ending. Little Samson, which I'd never heard up to this point. And like it was like it was like someone said, Here, Jay, here's a treasure box of all the Nintendo knowledge you never knew as a kid. And now it's open to you and you can go and learn about it. And that was like so fun and so exciting. Because I was learning about a new game that I'd never heard of like every single day. Shut up the ninja, yes, please. Kabuki Quantum Fighter, yes, please. You know, like just Battletoads Double Dragon, I'll take that. You know, like whatever I can learn about. Mm -hmm. It was like it was it was such a roller coaster because like I now I feel like I know a lot of it, but right when I, those consumer. early days, it was like I couldn't get enough. Right, and I will say, like with the game chasers, they brought so much to the table as for formatting the game hunting experience. You because really early days, like other shows that reminded me of that was American Pickers or like almost anything on those like history channels, the way they were doing the after interviews mm -hmm. and they're like, and they're like sitting to the side and like talking and then you're cutting back the gameplay footage. It's like, wow, there's a lot of editing involved in this episode that really gets you like excited for the games where rather than it's just like a vlog and you're just like, Hey, here's Dinosaur Peak. Uh, you know, looks pretty good. Da, da, da. Where now it's like they're showing Dinosaur Peak, and then it cuts back. We're like, and then we were at the game store, and I spotted out of the corner of my eye a little dinosaur, and I knew that was this rare game. And then it cuts right. back to the gameplay footage, and you're like, you get more of that storytelling. So, we can't talk about the game chasers without talking about a couple wacky guys that may or may not have took inspiration from them. Mm -hmm. You know who I'm talking about, Russ, so go ahead and say it. Retro Liberty. That's right. <laughs> the our friends. I, I can't even find the channel because it doesn't exist anymore. But Our friends Aaron and Ricky. And you know, the, like I think the weirdest thing about YouTube is this. Um, what I really wanted more than anything when I first started my channel was to be friends with these people that I thought were so cool aaron you are not cool you're a dork uh but um and now like i mean i, I talked to russ once a week mm -hmm. i can talk to nes complex i actually have shady j's number even though i don't text him because i don't want to bug him i talked to aaron on signal you know like all these people that i thought were completely inaccessible right somehow we all found our way together and and we're friends and we talk you know enough and uh it's just crazy right <laughs> right absolutely yeah i mean i have videos of on my channel congratulating retro liberty like congrats on you know getting five thousand subscribers or like some yeah. number or whatever and like right going back and forth and i remember sending them uh stuff that i made i did some diy stuff that i sent them and then they kind of give me a shout out and we we're kind of going back and forth and it was so cool to connect with. but the 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 series that really got me mm -hmm. in, interested in doing youtube was nintendo power time machine okay and that's where he goes through a nintendo power magazine and talks about some of the quirkier aspects of it and and really highlights it and as a matter of fact how i got in touch with uh chris was i was friends with aaron and i said Hey, I know you're friends with Chris. Can you please ask him if he would mind if I continued a series? And uh, and so 
Aaron asked him that night and he said, yeah, he said, go for it. So me and Chris eventually got in touch and Chris blessed me with it. And I recreated that background. Oh, nice. I wonder if he just printed out pictures and then pasted that up there. I assume he's not just hanging. Yeah, that's that's actually what, what I did is I went to I went to like uh, what's a, a, a printing Kinko's. place like Kinko's or something, and I went to Kinko's and I took like eight magazines and I think the only one that's different on mine is I didn't have that Mario three one so I did Super Mario World, but I think the rest of them are exactly the same. Oh, because you you scanned the actual Nintendo Power and printed I it. I scanned the Nintendo Power and printed it and then I put them on a whiteboard. Mm-hmm. So if you if you'll go to my channel and type in. Um, Retro Rewind. Okay. You can see that exact same background. And also, yes, I stole the, I stole the name NES Addict, NES Complex. So, yeah, you can. Oh. There we go. Like, see, the only one different is the Mario World. But I even tried to make them the same angles. Yes. So I really tried to like pay a I mean, lot cool. of this homage. It, it ties it in. I tried to pay a lot of homage. I, I, give you I like always thought <laughs> if I if I wanted Chris to see this, I wanted him to be proud of it. So, absolutely. Absolutely. I think he said good job, Jay. So. <laughs> Number one on my list to no surprise. I added the uh Friday the thirteenth on NES. LJN. That's a lot of people hate on this game. I think over the years it's slightly getting a better rap. Uh, a lot of merchandise is kind of being brought around it you can get you know figures of it lots of uh books have been written about it i got to be in some of those books they have one my buddy 8-bit steve puts it put out that's how to beat jason the easy way and it kind of breaks I need it down that book yeah it's a good one it's a hard cover i'm in there i'm in there and tyler's in there in the same page from generation you know what the greatest in. you know what the great thing about it is i am indirectly in there because tyler is wearing an nes addict shirt that's right what do you got on your list what's what's the next all one? right here's the last one russ here's the last one we've mentioned it in passing it's totally going to make sense once again avgn talked about it i have the adventure of link oh yeah so is you know a lot of people didn't like some of the um you know, the changes from the original Zelda. Uh, one thing I do think was maybe a misstep was they should have used a similar overworld or the same overworld. But the music's great. As long as you're willing to uh, do a little bit of grinding, Death Mountain is not that bad. I don't I don't know why that gets such a rap about being so hard. I didn't think it was hard at all. Oh, definitely um, not. Some of the later stuff gets a little hard. Uh, some of the dungeons, especially towards the end, Definitely, you have to use your brain and and do a lot of searching around. And there's some hidden walls that are tricky. Um, but I like the combat. I'll definitely like the like Super Mario Brothers style side scrollings that you get. Um, but uh, I don't know. I thought it was a fun game. I, I really enjoyed playing it several years ago when I when I played through it. But um, I think it's a bad rap. I think uh, it's just a little misunderstood, and people maybe just didn't just wanted more of that original Zelda, which they got probably when Link to the Past finally came out. Right. Thanks for listening to the monthly Warp Whistle. Check out full episodes every Saturday at 7 a.m.